when you pray, you must first believe that you have received it. It is when you have believed. When you are praying, you don't pray and get up of, out of your prayer and say, all oh, this is the way they pray. So we never know whether God will be doing. You don't cancel or destroy your praying with your saying. Let your saying agree with your prayer. When you come out of prayer, how is that stuff you are praying about? God has done what? Done it. That's how to believe. Is a law of faith. A law. Because the Bible says, whosoever, whosoever. Everybody inclusive. There is no exclusive with God. If I can do it and it can work for me, then it can work for you. It can work for everybody sitting here. I'm very slow this morning because I want you to get what I'm saying. I am not, it's not that I'm happy that everybody is coming to me and say, Pastor, come and pray for me. Pastor, my back is paining me. Pastor, my nose is paining me. Pastor, my... That's not my... I, under, I, I love the fact that you honor me in your heart and you call me when you have need. But I want you to grow. I want to be hearing testimonies of what you are doing with faith. I want to be hearing, I want to, Pastor, we are somewhere and we, we solid it out. You know one day Dan was coming, Dan, Dan where's Golden Boy? Dan was coming to church, he's the one in charge of the Kubwa transport axis. And as they were coming one day, the boss, the clutch plates burnt. And the driver called him instantly. That, oh boy, we can't make it again. Oh. We have to get on that bus. Ah, that minute, this morning, Dan said, no, that's not possible. He said, put the phone in the speaker, put it beside the clutch. And spoke to the clutch. He said, press it. It worked. So when he got, he said, Pastor, I shook. I said, Yes. Whosoever shall speak to this mountain. Whosoever. Whosoever shall speak is a law. If it applies to only one person or one category of people, then it can't be a law. There is no exclusivity to God. That was why when Peter, thank God for the song SOG sang, when Peter wanted to walk on water, Jesus, I love that story. One of my finest stories in scriptures. Jesus did not stop him from walking on water. They saw him walking on water that day. Like a lot of you will have to learn how to come out of your boat into the water. Jesus was walking. And they said, Master, Peter said that. Only Peter. There are 11 apostles in the boat. 12 apostles, I beg your pardon. Only one person said it. He said, Master, if it is you walking on water, if that is you, tell me to come walking on water. Is that, that's instructive that Jesus Christ must have told them, love, that anything you see me doing, eh? Is that what he said? If you see me do anything, that means you also can do what? Otherwise, he will not say, if that is you walking on water, then tell me to come. It's because Jesus Christ already told them that if you see me walking on water, you can do it. If you see me healing the sick, you can do it. If you see me raising the dead, you can do it. So say, Master, that's you walking on water. Tell me to come. Jesus did not say, ah, Peter. What insult? My God. This is sea finish. So now, in your head, you think me and you, we are on, oh, it's, it's because I've been, I've been wearing boxers around. So you don't know you are talking to the Messiah? I was born by a virgin. Who are you? Peter. I fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to gather the power of the Holy Ghost. Have you fasted for seven days, Peter? You want to walk on water? The moment I enter this boat, you see what I'll do for you now. Is that what he said? What did he say? Come! And Peter was there walking on water. Walking on water towards Jesus. The Bible says when he took his eyes off Jesus and he saw the boisterousness of the wind, it began to sink. When it began to sink, Jesus did not say, yes. Now beans, <laughs> drink some water first. By the time you take like two, three gallons, next time when you see me walking in water, you will know that I'm the son of God. Is that what he said? He said, why did you doubt? You were doing well. You could have walked on water. You could have done it. You were doing well. Peter saw the wind. Let me tell you the truth. It was not the storm or the wind that made Peter sink. It was his fear. It's not a storm. The storm couldn't have made Peter sink. Because he could not have walked on a calm sea anyway. If you think it's easy, you carry a bucket of water. In your house. 
Make sure there's no wind. And stand on it. Then you will know that it was not the storm that made Peter sink. And it was not the storm because Peter was a fisherman. Why did Peter sink? Why couldn't Peter swim? Because fear will not only drown your supernatural capacity, it will drag you beyond your natural abilities. Even the things you could have done naturally, fear will not make you do it. Peter could have swam. It was not a, it was not a, it was not a novice when it comes to the water. Why did he sink? Fear is an enemy. Fear is not an emotion. Fear is an enemy. Fear is not a feeling. Fear is a force. Fear will drag you down. Peter was close, but fear dragged him down, okay? So last Sunday I said you must speak first. Is that what I said? Number two, you must do what again? I'll be sure you're following me. Say it out. Don't whisper it. Don't say it in your mind. Jesus spoke and said, I was heard it. Anything cannot speak out. You don't what? Eh? Anything cannot speak out. You don't do what? You don't believe it. Church, you have to follow me. I want to be sure you're following me. You need to go back to listen to these sermons. Go back. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Anything you don't speak or you cannot speak out, you don't believe it. If you cannot say, I'm healed, you don't believe it. Speak out loud. Number three, do what? Speak what you want to see. Bible says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Don't say, I'm not weak. I'm not weak. I'm not weak. I'm not weak. Don't say that. Don't say, I'm not barren. I'm not barren. Say, I am fruitful. Because the enemy will keep pushing and injecting in your mind the things that you are saying. I'm not burning, I'm not burning. What you're hearing is burning, 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 burning. The Bible says when there's a casting down, you say what? It didn't say, don't say there's no casting down. There's no casting down. There's no casting down. When God saw darkness, what did he say? Let there be. It didn't say there's no darkness. There's no darkness. There's no darkness. He spoke what he wanted to see. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the righteous say so. Let the redeemed say so. The promise of God are voice activated. Speak out. Number four, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. I over, I know I overloaded this one last one. So I'm not going to go through it again. Talk back. Ah, I love that. Talk back to the devil. How many of you talked back to the devil last Sunday? Kai, talk back. Talk back, talk back, talk back, talk back. Talk back to the devil. You know, after service Sunday, somebody told me about she, she wanted she was supposed to travel abroad, you know, but there was no funds to travel. And she confessed about it. She said, Pastor said, all expense paid trip. Confessed, kept confessing. My this this trip, I'm supposed to go on this trip. It's a training, it's all expense paid. It's good. She was going to London and, and she kept confessing it. And the boss already told her that there's no money, we cannot sponsor you. So immediately after service, when she got home, the boss called her, and the boss was very angry. Very angry. We just want to give you this money. Nee. We just want to give you this money. You can be sure it was under pressure. We just want to give. There's no money, but we don't even know why we want to give you this money. <laughs> he said, I know why. <laughs> I spoke it. So the boss gave him the money, paid for the visa, paid for the tickets, paid for it. You know, and that's what happens when you speak the word. Speak to the mountain. I did that. So go back next week. Last week, go back and listen. Number five, speak until you see it. Speak until, don't stop speaking it. Don't stop speaking it. Speak until you see. You see, if you do the things that you know, your life will change. Your problem is not knowledge. Your problem is action. A lot of us know too much. Our head is like memory card. You are a river, not a power bank. You are a river. You are supposed to be a river flowing. You are not a storage tank. Your brain is not to be storing revelation. Your life is to express revelation. Are you following my point? So don't just put this in your head, put it in your head. Jam your head. If I ask you, there's nothing you don't know. You know, but you're not doing anything. Speak until you see it. That woman, God said, she kept saying, Mark chapter 5. She kept saying, she kept saying. There were many reasons why she could have changed that confession. Many reasons. You know one of the reasons? There was a crowd. There was a crowd in that place. She could have said, ah, I've been bleeding for 12 years. How will I be able to make it? See this crowd. I don't think I'll be able to touch Jesus. So. She could have changed just because of what she saw. And she was not the only person who was sick. Do you know there was nobody, there was no antecedents or precedents in scriptures that showed that people had touched Jesus Christ to get healed before, before that time. There was none. So she had nothing to learn from. 
She created her own ticket with God. I am going to touch Jesus and I'm going to get healed. She kept saying it. She kept saying it. So on that day, she saw some people, talk, some people were even lame. She saw them touching Jesus. They did not get healed. She saw a blind man. You see that? Touching Jesus. They did not get healed. She saw a lot of this happening, you know, and nothing was happening. But she said, no, me, me, oh, as for me, oh, the just shall live by his own faith. He said, hey, what about brother Lagbaja? I know one brother. He has been confessing. Nothing happened. I know one sister, sister Tamedo. She confessed, confessed, confessed. She did not even get us bounty now. I know, no, no, no. Are you them? Is them you? Is there you? Are you him? It's not your business. You shall live by your own faith. It's my own, I know. You'll be shocked how many people's life, what their, what their lives are. Don't ever make anybody's experience make, make the word of God a lie in your life. No matter what they are. Even if they are bishop. Nobody. Say, what about Pastor Susan? There was a very strong pastor. You know, he's, he's a pastor, but he died of, of, of kidney disease. See? Or, or he died of cancer. Or he died of heart failure. That's that pastor. That's not me. Is it, is it me? No, it's not me. The Bible says the just shall do what? Live by his own. He said, ah, what are you talking about? Hey, no. My case is different. Keep saying it till you see it. Don't let circumstances around your life cause you to change your confession. Don't allow anything stop you from saying it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let me do more. Joshua 1 verse 8. Quickly. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Yes. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You will meditate therein. It will not depart from your mouth. You will meditate daily, day and night. Someone say day and night. Day and night. Every day, the book of the law does not depart from your mouth. The promises of God does not depart from your mouth. People have it tagged on their wall, on their fridge. As you are passing by your fridge, you see the promise of God there. As you are walking by your wardrobe, you see the promise of God there. You keep it before your eyes. When I was going to start SLC in those days, I told you. I put the pictures of Bishop Adebo, Reynard Bonke, put the pictures of Pastor Adebo, put the pictures of uh, Pastor Paul and on my wardrobe. When I woke up, I see them every day. This is not going to depart from my eyes. Because we say, you know, Pastor, if you start pastoring, you must first suffer, oh, suffer, 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 oh. Ah, you know, after suffering, after maybe like 10 years, things cannot begin to... I say, where was that written in Bible? It's not in the book of the law. It's not in the book of the law. When I sit down with pastors, and pastors say, hey, ministry is so hard, things are so tough, I just shake my bum bum like this. I live there. It's not written in the scriptures. It's not written in scriptures. You can decide what your reality is going to be. You know, you're, me and me and Val were talking yesterday. In this country, things are not tough. Oh. <laughs> Trust me when I say things are not tough. I mean, God who made me. Things are not tough in this country. It's your own, you know. This country. Things are not up. And there are people who are making legit money. I didn't say Yahoo for you. They are not doing Yahoo. They are not stealing. They are not thief politicians. I'm saying people are doing legit business, making solid money with God opening doors for them internationally, everywhere. They will just do one small thing. They do one small work, Ronaldo salary. Small work. Big money. They just bring a whole small idea. Say, why not? So then it's just 10 10 naira. They are collecting your 10 10 naira. 10 10 naira. See, I subscribe to something. They got 20 naira. 20 naira. They just come with 10 10 naira. 5 5 naira. 5 5 naira. 5 5 naira. 5 5 naira. Collect naira from 5 million people. People, Bible says, I will lead you to treasures of darkness. There are things happening in this country. Don't assume that things are tough. Things are not tough. I was in a board meeting one day. And there was one of our, you know, he was a billionaire. He was going to start a company. Start a, start a hotel in Metama here. He said he was going to, they said they, said they were going to dwarf Transco. They, they were planning, they had bought the land. They bought the land 650 million. They bought the land. I, I can remember vividly. That was my law firm in those days. Then they said there was a particular tree they wanted that they would import that tree from abroad. That, that tree is not in Nigeria. They were going to import the tree <laughs> and come and plant it here. So the man said, you know, I just wanted to, I want to know how it feels. Can you build a model of that room? I just want to feel it. So they had a meeting and they started building the board stuff, you know. So the contractor they gave the job to, I think he now saw a cheaper one in Wusi Market or something. I don't know where he saw it. 
he went and bought. So in that meeting, the man now talking. So then I said, this thing, was this the specification we gave to the man? Say, actually, you know, my team and I, you know, as we we're going, we now saw, we now saw that this was a bit more affordable. The man said, in your life, in your, in your, in your life till you die, when we give you a specification in this meeting, you go and look for it, even if it's a billion dollars. It's not your money we are spending. In this country. It's your reality, you know. It's your reality, you know. Don't join them to say things are tough. Oh. Instead, begin to confess that things are better for you. That you eat the good of this land. There's good in this land, though. There's good in this land. Let me tell you, there's good in the land of Nigeria. Oh. There are people that can never relocate from this country. You are going about grumbling. You just continue to know what they're doing. <laughs> there are people that they will never leave this country. Because there's good in this land. It's a land flowing with milk. You have to arrange yourself so that the milk can flow to you. It's a flow. When they call it a meltdown, I said before, economic meltdown, what, it means what? It melted and did what? It's flow. So your one is to just put your cup and receive it. Keep saying what you say. Number four, number six, don't change your confession. Mark chapter five, help me this. Mark chapter five, verse 35. Don't change your confession on the account of a new information. Mark chapter 5, verse 35. While he had spake, yes. there came from the ruler of the synagogue. Now, this is the story I've been reading for like two weeks now. While he was speaking with that woman whose issue of blood was healed. You know that woman? Remember that woman, Abby? The moment she was healed, Jesus said, who touched me? And he was looking at her for who did. The woman came and says, me. The Bible says, and he told Jesus the whole truth. Someone said, the old truth. Everything that happened since the problem began. Hey, my master Jesus. Hey, oh, Lord, your fair. She first dance, 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 dance. I went to social medical center. They say, hey, my life is gone. I went to this one medical center. They gave me injection. I even did surgery. As she was saying, Jarius' daughter was about to die. See, this woman's testimony is, ah, oh, yeah, now we have had your testimony. So I said, no, 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 no. Let her tell her story. As he was talking and talking, someone now came from the house of Jarius and said, Thy daughter is dead. That was his greatest fear. Come and save my daughter before she dies. If she dies, in come. Is this not Jesus? There is no case too late for Master Jesus. She laughed. Let us see her testimony. She says she's dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Did Jesus complain of troubling? No. Jesus does not complain of troubling. You are not stressing him. What does the next verse say? Help me do more. As soon as Jesus heard the word, as soon as he heard the word, he said unto the ruler of the yes. be not afraid. Be not afraid. Only believe. He spoke to Darius. Hey, stop the fear. Because fear comes by hearing. The moment they said your daughter is dead, you can almost imagine the pictures in his head. Ah! This girl is gone. Jesus Christ attacked the fear. Because faith is to God what fear is to Satan. Job said, the things I have feared the most has happened to me. The things I have been afraid of. If you are constantly afraid of something, there's a stronger tendency that that thing will happen to you. He says, stop the fear. Don't be afraid. He didn't even talk to the others. So do not change your confession. His confession was that Jesus Christ, come and lay your hands on my daughter and she'll be well. Don't now change that confession because a new information has come. You are applying for a scholarship and you heard that this organization is no longer giving scholarship. Don't change your confession on the account of a new information. Stay where you are. Hebrews says, let us hold fast to our confession. Because he that promised is able to do it. Someone says he's able to do it. There is nothing that God has promised you that he's not able to do. Hold on to your confession strong. This is what God told me. This is what God told me. The doctor said they felt a lump in your breast or a lump in your body. You say no. That's a new information. That's a new information. I told about my daughter who came here. She went to check for something in her armpits. Ordinary to check armpits. That what this they said we have seen lump in your breast. Who sent you to my breast? Check here. You are seen here. 
And someone whose mother died of breast cancer. Do you know what that can do to a heart? That's an introduction of a new information. You don't change your confession. Say no. So when she called me, she was supposed to go to the hospital. Don't go to the hospital tomorrow. You need to spend time hitting the word. So she spent over one month. Every morning. I sent her healing scriptures. Over 50 healing scriptures. Every morning she would confess her and her husband. Over her body. Went back to the same hospital. The lumps have disappeared. Don't change your confession on the account of a new information. If God said go and you saw war, be going. If God said there's a way here, be going there. That's what God told me. Don't change. They say, hey, you know, our organization, we actually are not giving out jobs. I say, but God already said that. So go back to your prayer room. Confess. Keep confessing. Because I'm going to send rain. Elijah said, go and check. Say, no rain. Stay there. Mambo cobres ketelebradia. I declare it. There's rain. God said that to me. I declare God's word. Once has he spoken, twice have I heard. I keep saying it. I keep saying it. I will not change what I'm saying. I will not change what I'm saying. I will not change what I'm saying because a new information has come. The last one on my list here. Don't allow company of naysayers following on your faith journey. Don't allow company of naysayers. Don't allow the need for approval of people or the desire not to offend people's feelings push you into keeping negative energy around you. Don't be afraid of being mocked for your faith. The moment they said, in the next verse, help me do more. That next verse, we read verse 36 now. Verse 37, what does it say? And he suffered no man. He suffered him. no man. Save Peter. Why? Why did he suffer no man to follow them? Because the moment people say, ah, Jairus doesn't have died. Imagine what happens as they are going there. As they go to Jairus' house, what could be happening with that crowd? Somebody go and meet Jairus. It is where? God give it, God take it. Don't worry. Another one will come. I want to be crying. <laughs> and she was a Christian. <laughs> All that rubbish would have been going on. He suffered no man to follow them. Your faith journey is a long journey. Your faith journey is a journey for yourself. Don't allow them. He got to the house of that girl. Imagine that was not that surprise. I don't want to read because of my time. They were crying. Hey, 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 hey. What did you guys say? Give me this verse. Verse 38. And he came to the house of Lord Snuggle. Yes. He the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. Yes. And when he was coming, he said unto them, yes. Why make you this and do and yes. The damsel is not dead but sleeping. She's not dead because you guys collect things that be not. As they were. This girl is sleeping. Because you don't wake the dead, you only wake the sleeping. It calls things that be. You see, Jesus Christ is a faith person. Jesus is a faith person. God. These people that were crying, they wept with great ado. What happened when they, when they said that? What happened next? And they laughed him to scorn. They began to laugh. How did they switch from crying? The people that are crying with you are not crying with you. Some of you are so pity party. We love people to sympathize with us. You think, I, you think I, you are an object of sympathy. You are a believer. You are a believer. Like child of God. You should be envied, not pitied. You just want people to be there. I just me. They come and visit your hospital. They come and visit your hospital. You lie down in your hospital today. Sister Grace. Thank you. Help me shift that bomb fitter to that side. You can, you can drop the one you brought. Thank you. Can you imagine, Sister Grace? I've been in this hospital for the past one week. Can you imagine that Sister for lack care? Ordinary test message. Get well soon. Be, 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 be well. She cannot send. I know that it's time like this that one will really know who really loves one. Shut up, that get off that sick bed. A child of God. Nobody to help me. Nobody to help me. Shut up. You are a child of the God of the Holy Earth. I'm not the object of envy. 
They were crying. No, no, no. They started laughing. What did you guys do? But when he had put them all he out, he put them all out. Sister Jenga, eat her. It won't be a ball. And he said, go, 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 go. He said, no. Ah, Jesus Christ. Even if everybody go out, you see this brother Ferdinand. She was the one that he was the one that really paid her school fees. Charge the sister. Say, ah, no. The mother in law is outside. Everybody outside. You see, because there's no sentiment in destiny. Outside. Outside. Say, I don't want that. I don't know how they are going to feel. Outside first. One feel outside. You are so afraid. You are being the mess you are in right now. It's because you are so afraid of hurting people's feelings. That's why you are. That's why, that's why where you are where you are. That's why you are still at that job. Because you want to hurt. And destiny has no feelings. Somebody's about to be raised from the dead here. We don't care how you feel. I don't care how you feel. Sentiments. I don't want to hurt them. I don't know. Some of you sit down. Your friends are talking rubbish. You cannot get up and leave them. Because you don't want them to feel like maybe they, you are holier. holier than thou. I am holier than thou. That does not sit amongst them. And you know, if I stand up now, they will, they will let them. Anybody can think what they want to. That's their cup of tea. Outside, they say, Jesus, this woman here, she was there when she was born. She has been crying this morning. Outside, go and cry. Outside, you stay there. You don't want people to hurt. And your life is ebbing out. You are hurting yourself. You are staying back. Things are not working for you. And you know this is because I've stayed back here. Get out! You don't care how people feel. They will be alright. They will be alright. I tell you, they will not die. I don't want to. I don't want to. He's the one that helped me. He's the one that did that. He has, you know, that's where I've been working. I, that's, he's the one that embraced me when I first came to serve in Abuja. Uh, I cannot come and be there. The faith journey is a long journey. Help me with 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to read this together. Do more. From verse 18. No sentiment. No sentiment. A faith journey. No sentiment. When my father-in-law was knocked down by a I told you the story. When the ambulance rushing down to the hospital, everyone called me. There is no brain scan machine in Guagalada, I said, but Jesus told me to go to Guagalada. Everyone who meant anything to me was calling me. Do you think we don't care about you? Do you think we don't care? I don't care whether you care. Jesus said, go to Guagalada. If you didn't even, he, he think we are not sensitive to you. Don't be sensitive. Don't be sensitive. This man is close to death. Any show of sentiments, he may be gone. There's no time for emotions. There's no time. My friend, not just a friend, he's an elder friend. He's a medical doctor. Someone I love so very much. Dr. Jim Lass. Called us. He's a doctor. He's an elder friend. He's a pastor. He said, Philip, turn back now. I said, Nahi. <laughs> Jesus said, go to Guadalajara. No. No sentiments. I follow what Jesus said. Put them all out. Shulamite. Let's go together. Second Kings. And when the child was grown. When child was grown. It fell on a day. Yes. That he went out to his father to the reapers. Yes. And he said unto his father. Yeah. My head, my head. Yes. And he said to a lad. That's what Nadia Deko. My head, my head. Yeah. Carry him to his mother. Yes. And when, the, when he had taken him. Yes. And brought him to his mother. Yeah. He sat on her knees. Yes. Till noon and then died. He died on her mother's knees. His mother's knees. My head, my head. Die. What happened next? And she went up. She went and up. Laid him on the bed of the man of she God. She went and laid him on the bed. Yes. And shut the door. Upon so him. you see, they had created a room for the man of God in their house. <laughs> they have sown seeds in the man of God's life. Now it's time to make demands on that. You see, you cannot make a demand on the seed you have not sown. I see people trying to make demand on seeds they have not sown. You are trying to debit from an account where there's nothing. People are doing that in their marriages. Their emotional banks, emotional accounts. You are not 
depositing and you want to demand. And so they took that child who had died and laid him on the man of God's bed. This is the bed that the man of God used to sleep. This is the bed that we, we bought for the man of God. Laid him there and shot him. What happened next? And shut the door upon yes, him and yes, went out. Yes. And she called unto her husband, called and, her said, husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one yes, of the young men and yes, one of the asses, that yes, I may run to the man of God and come again. That I may run to the man of God and come again. Yes. And he said, When shall thou go to him? Today? Yes. It is neither new moon nor Why are you Sabbath. going today? This is not the normal day we used to see man of God. What are, what's happening? The husband is asking, What's happening? What did you say? Help me. And she said, It he shall said, be well. You see, so she didn't even tell her husband her son had died. Your faith journey. Is a long journey. Yeah. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Some of you are looking for faith on Facebook. You have a problem, you can put it on Facebook. It says, Shall be well. You see, I'm maintaining it. Our confession. Shall be well. She didn't even tell her husband. Her husband. Our son had died. Yay! Ori Yamio. She's full of faith. He said, it shall be well. What happened next? Then she saddled an ass and Saddle said to her yes. servant, drive and go forward. Go forward. Stop not thy riding for yes. me, except I be. Be running fast. Don't stop. Except I stop you. Yes, continue. So she went yes. and came unto the man of God to yes. Mount Camel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her far off, yes. that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yes. yonder yes. is that Shunammite. What yes. now I pray thee to yes. and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Yes. Is it well with her husband? Is yes. it well with her child? Because the man of God saw her the way she was running. Say, ah, this might be a problem. Run and ask her. Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, what? It is well. It is well. This was a mother who has just lost a child. Her only child. It is well. You see, you cannot crowdfund a spiritual crisis. Some of us have pastor everywhere. You got that pastor like a You have pastor in Lagos. I have pastor in uh, Ibadan. See, I don't want Ibadan. Very strong. I've even sent a picture of James and uh, John and Andrew to him. He sent me to look at the one that will be my husband. You have, you have pastor in Calabar. You have pastor. You think you can gather. You, you don't want to pay the price of personal discipline for God's intimacy. You are looking for people that will gather. It is well. It is well. What can the crowd do for you? It is well, she said. It's a long journey. When Peter started sinking, what could the 11 apostles do for him? Other than that, to put their hands and say, ah, he couldn't have been more. What would he have done? Nothing. All people are going about, they can't do you anything. So what will happen? Hey, God, hey, hey. What? What would they do? You have problems, you don't have two friends that can hold hands in faith with you. But you have 10,000 followers. If you die now, can you beat your chest that you have a friend that come and raise from dead? If you, if you die today, can you have, do you have a friend? Hey, if I die, this person will come and raise me from the dead. Do you have? Or is everything just cruise? IG. <laughs> this woman had friends. She said, This well. I'm going for the man of God. You see, Giasi was not even my problem. This Giasi cannot solve my problem. I'm going for the man of God. What does he say next? Help me. And when she came to the man of God, yes. you, she caught him by the feet. She caught him by the feet. But Gyasi came near to trust her away. This Gyasi has had a problem a long time. Longest time. Longest time. I'm not like that. He wanted to, this is, you know, Gyasi has been eating this guest with this man's food. Told you about your son of I mean, let's even assume that you don't have brain. You ask, you, because you live with Elijah. He has been eating this woman's food. You saw her grab and you want to, you didn't even think of what you have eaten. What did the what did Elisha say? Help me. And the man of God said, Yes, let her alone. Let her alone. For her soul is vexed within her. Yes. And the Lord had hid it from me. Yes, because the man of God is me. not omnipotent. The man of God, your faith journey is a long journey. The man of God is not omnipotent. The man of God is not omniscient. I don't know everything. And that's why I don't open myself. I can say, everybody's going. That's why I don't market our office here for counseling. Come on, cancel. No, everybody's going to Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the great counselor. Yeah. I'm telling you. Everybody, I come. If I allow you to go, I won't do anything. I won't do any work again. Pastor, I want to see you. Pastor. One lady came one day. 
after wasting my time, what happened? Say, my spiritual father, what now happened? After that, what now happened? And my spiritual father is not happy. So what happened? Say, because I know I'm going to wear an inch. So what now happened? Say, because I know he's not even talking to me. I got it. So what now happened? Say, that's all. How old is your spiritual father? He said, he's 29. I said, stand up. I told praise. I said, praise. Anytime this guy come here, tell him I'm praying. So open my door for this guy again. That's my voice, Great counsel of his. He said, The Lord has hidden it from me. The man of God said, The Lord has hidden it. So, what did the man of God say? Help me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Yes. Did I not say, Do not deceive yes. me. Then he said to Gehazi, You, you will notice that in everything she did not say, My son is dead. She didn't let it come out of her mouth. What did she say next? Help me. Then he said to Gehazi, Yes. Spread up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand. Take my staff in your hands. Way. Yes. If thou meet any man, salute him not. If and anybody thou... greet you on the way, don't do what? Don't greet. Yes. Answer him not again. Yes. And lay my staff upon the face if of the If anybody child. meets you on the road, don't answer him. Do you know why he says no answer him? You are carrying the staff of the man of God. The Lord has sent you an assignment. Anybody that asks you a question, don't answer them. Stop greeting people up and down. As you are going, Gehazo, Gehazo, hey, my chamo. Now you be that, ah, oh, moment, this day, this day, I'll tell you, say, ah, if you know what they go through now for this country, my friend, a strong man, if he survives, I beg. That's so why everybody there, it is just tight everywhere. Say, man, you know, you hear that get away cook for four days? Oh, more, that will bust my brain. Cool, up a single cool for four. People get power. People get mind. It's only the staff of Elijah. People get mind. People sabi do things like they tell you. Me, sir, don't they check Google now? Wait till I go for break. I mean, people say, ah, no, you only that one. You know, you that guy will slap police. Ah, person go slap. Say that boy in Papa Spirit days. Which kind of Papa Spirit day inside now? Ah, person go slap police because of Papa Spirit day inside now. Which kind of police when they look for scapegoat, they look for person, they will take blow trumpet. Say, ah, oh, but we know if you keep quiet now. We know if you keep quiet, we must protest. We must come against the colonialism. We must come against that. Come against. We must. I say not true. That true. We can't. We can't say okay. Okay. I don't see now. I say don't be go be. I said, where are you going to go now? This morning we we stick with your hand. I be done. They play golf. <laughs> say no. Now my mentor say me can go use this stick. Wake up that guy. Say, ah, and I want beat him. Because where I don't die now. And I want you stick beat him. Now ah, if your mentor no get brave, you no get sense. <laughs> you know if you tell your mentor say, because you know they use stick. Wake up anybody. I beg, beg, don't forget this. But see, I don't die. It's not supposed to say, 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 well, beg, no bless. I know if you obey my method, no be so me to I believe. But maybe we shall go. Sir. So you go see, you go see. Conversations that leak the unction. You see, you come full. And before you know it, you have lost everything that's in your spirit. By greeting people up and down. Greeting people up and down. If you don't see people to greet, you look for people to greet. What happened? Help me, do more. What happened next? And the mother of the child said, yes. as the Lord liveth, yes. and as thy soul liveth, yes. I will not leave thee. Yes. And he arose and followed her. Yes. And Gazi passed on before them, yes. and laid the staff upon the face of yes. the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Mm -hmm. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, the child is not awake. The boy did not wake up. He, he put it like this. I don't do my best, I beg. <laughs> the boy did not wake up. The boy did not wake up. Paid no price for personal discipline. Proximity does not give you access to the anointing. It's the thirst and hunger that gives you anointing. Man of God, put the stick. The boy didn't wake up. Did even try a second time. I've done my best. I cannot come and go and die. So they give you an assignment in church. You've done your best. I cannot come and go and kill myself. No results. But what can I do? We are all here. Things are hard. I dropped the stick. He did not wake up. What happened except me? And when Elisha was coming to the house, yes. behold, the child was dead yes. and laid upon his bed. Yes. He went in therefore yes. and shut the door. So Elisha shut the door. You see that coming up again? That your faith journey is a long journey. Shut the door. Didn't want to help me. And prayed unto the Lord. Yes. And he went up and lay upon the, lay yes. upon the child and yes. put his mouth upon his mouth. Yes. And his eyes upon his eyes. Yes. His hands upon his because hands. Because this Gehazi have already corrupted the man, the, 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 the staff. The staff cannot walk again. 
The man of God had to put his eyes upon the guy's eyes. Put the mouth, everything else. The boy is deader than he was dead. Oh, that is tough. Can I wake him again? Stretch upon himself on the child. The flesh of the child waxed warm. What happened next? Verse 35. And he returned and walked in the house to He began to pan. Meko so pretele kataya. And the leke biliki taya. In kambrando suferi ataliki ba. The boy is warm, but he's not alive. I'm not comfortable with being warm. I want to be alive. Ah. The business deal has clicked, but has not finished. In the Bible was panting to and fro in his room. Laid back. How many times? Seven times. Seven times. And the child sneezed seven times. Opened his eyes. Faith. The same thing till he got the results. I've like given up the first time, given up the second time. So I tried three times. This, this principle is the same everywhere. If you look at Acts chapter 9, 36 to 41, it's the same everywhere. Remember, I said you cannot crowdfund a spiritual crisis, you cannot gather feet on Instagram. Acts chapter 9, 36 to 41. Now there was a now there was a Joppa, mm -hmm. a certain disciple named Tabitha, mm -hmm. which by interpretation mm -hmm. is called Dorcas. This mm -hmm. woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And mm -hmm. it came to pass in those days that mm -hmm. she was sick and died. Mm -hmm. When they had washed, they laid her up in, they laid her in an upper chamber. And mm -hmm. for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, mm -hmm. they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter arose and went with them. When mm -hmm. he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and mm -hmm. all the windows stood by him, weeping. Mm -hmm. And showing the coats and garments with Dorcas made mm. while she was with them. But mm -hmm. Peter put them all forth and kneeled down. He did what? The them same them. principle. Same principle. Put them outside. Say, but we are believers. Let us hold hands. Outside. This is the reason why your prayer sometimes has not answered you. You have put yourself together with too many unbelief. I tell you the truth. What two friends can deliver for you who are working in faith? 20,000 friends who are not working in faith cannot deliver it. Tell you the truth. Be deliberate with your choice of friends. He said, put them all out. So what did Peter do? Help me. I kneeled down and prayed. And I turning prayed. him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. So you see another principle here. Peter did what? Knelt down and prayed. But the girl did not rise until Peter spoke to her. Did you see that? That prayer didn't do it. He knelt down, prayed, but then got up and spoke to the dead body. You see God do the same thing. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the waters. Nothing happened until God did what? Spoke. The presence of God did not do anything. It was there for maybe a thousand years, maybe a gazillion years, who knows? But the darkness was still pitch deep darkness until God says something. When he got to the tomb of Lazarus, he did the same thing. He did his eyes and he prayed, he said, Father, I thank you because you've heard me and you hear me always. He said, because, because these people here, you want them to be glorified. You want them to glorify your name. He now spoke to Lazarus. Lazarus! Is that what he said? So he didn't say, God, come and raise Lazarus for us. He spoke to Lazarus. Show them all out. Spoke. Show them all out. Show them all out. Your faith journey it's a long journey. I'm going to continue this sermon next week. Next week is our final sermon. You know, I could teach on faith for three months. Because the more I dig into it, the more I see I have nothing what I want to say. There's so much loaded. And that's why you have to go back to those sermons and listen to them. They are free of charge. They are not, we are not collecting money. Download and listen. Let your faith rise. Because the days of persecution are coming. The days of attack. I'm not cursing you. They are going to come. If you are not ready for it, it will show. The Bible says if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It's not that the adversity was strong. It was you that has not garnered strength alone, a, 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 you know, enough to be able to deal with the adversity you are facing. When the enemy comes against your health, you need faith. Faith in God. You need faith for that business. It will cost faith. I wish I was stood like this when I go to when I go to be the first miracle, miracle center. He said, This miracle center is very expensive. It's going to cost us faith to build it. That's what it costs. Because faith is the currency of the spirit. I told you that. It costs it cost us faith to come here. It costs us faith to start church. Well, I was a choir member. It costs us faith to start a church. 
This thing that God is telling you to do, it will cost you faith to do it. God will never tell you to do something that is easy. Never. If this thing is easy, it's not God. Anything that is easy, they say, you can be sure it's not God, it was you. If God is going to speak to you, he will tell you to do something that it will require, because the Bible says without faith, no man can please the Lord. Without faith, you cannot stand. Without faith, you cannot fight. Without faith, you cannot have it. Without faith, you cannot conquer. Without faith, you cannot live. Bible says the just shall live by his faith. And that's why faith is critical. You must div- take personal responsibility for developing and developing your own faith. In 2022, I had suffered from a terrible cough. Cough. I don't know the name of the cough. It was a very embarrassing cough. Those kind of cough that when you cough it like this, everybody look at you. I say, ah, ekpeleo. Those kind of cough that you don't know whether you are coughing out your lungs. Terrible cough. And it was more embarrassing for me because, you know, in those days, whether we were in church, I would just, <laughs> hello, the doctor. I said, you know, everybody would be so concerned around you. And I'd listen and, you know, coughing like that for about three weeks. I picked up one bishop with Nicholas sermon, understanding the roots of sickness and diseases. In 2022, in, 22, in 2002, I had finished from um, secondary school. I was getting ready to go to university. So I used to go to a chemist where I was working there as a chemist. And there was a rechargeable, you know that rechargeable lamp? You know that rechargeable lamp? That has red like this. With one fluorescent like this. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We, we use that lamp for Bible study. As you are playing sermons, you are looking at it with the lamp. With the, because there's no light anywhere. You are looking at your Bible and reading. If you miss a point, you run. Play. Play. The oldest one that we enjoy with all this, you know, technology, you have to be rewinding. You have to bring it out, put the Bible in it. Gen Z cannot understand what I'm saying. But I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes the, 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 the tape, will hook. you remove the entire thing. You arrange it, cello tape it. You may lose one or two things, you cut it to blade, you come, you put it back. Understanding the root of sickness and disease. 2002. 2002. How many years now? 21 years. How old was I? I went to university. Escoto Lobata. Met. Shetelekete. Men close copra. I was in the chemist. People that came to buy drugs. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> ah, go and see, doctor. This is your cough. After I heard it to a point, Bishop Edebo said something in that sermon. He said in 1979, he was going to preach somewhere. And he had a running nose. And he had an handkerchief in his hands. And he said, out of the violence of faith, because he told himself, ah, why do I have cut Somebody said, I know it's because of the dusty road. He said, but I'm not the only one on this dusty road. Why is everybody not going about with cutting their nose? He said, out of the violence of it, I threw away my handkerchief. I said, you this cutter, if you like, come here, I will not touch you. I'm going to go and preach like that. 1979, as at the time he was preaching that sermon, he said, his nose has stopped running. It has been stationary. I had that thing. I cough one cough. Ah-ha! The lady that was with me, I said, this is the last cough I will cough till I die. She said, uh, you. <laughs> you that have been coughing every two, two minutes. I got back to my work. It was later in the night that she reminded me that do you know you have not coughed another cough since that time? I said, ah, it's true. 2002. Till now, I have never had to use any drug medication on cough. Ever. I built my faith capacity. Ah! I must have listened to that sermon about a hundred times. You can't continue your life like this. Look at you. You are way better than you are. Fear will not only drag you beyond or below your spiritual potential, it will drag you even below your natural abilities. Even things you could have done without God, you will not be able to do it. Because of fear. I want to bother I'm beginning to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. The Bible says, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keba, braso, 
Rako sute lekebala. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 